Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is I yet again, your one and only host, the Cosmic Jedi. Welcome back to my channel again. Mm. Spoiler warning for the Ant-Man Quantum Mania. In three, two, one. You have been warned. When I made my trailer reaction, I was hoping that one person or two people died in this movie. I was looking forward to seeing unique creatures with a level of um, intelligence in this movie. I know it's supposed to be an Ant-Man movie, so therefore it's comedy. Unless it's comedy with stupidity attached to it. Uh, may maybe I missed that. Or there's a little memo going around saying when you go and watch this movie, expect good humor and stupidity. And there was no discussion or explanation between the characters as well to try and figure out why there were so many similarities between them as human beings and these creatures. Humor, for example. So everyone laughs? Everyone knows humor in this realm? If they had said the quantum realm is, is so diverse and different and so unique, but we share similarities such as humor and drinking alcohol or having a bar, having a restaurant, unless they're saying all that was set up because Kang introduced that and there was no mention of that. There was no mention of, oh, Kang was the one that gave us civilization the way it is now. We we'll become into bars, our spaceships and all the things we use, the houses talking. Was it just unique to the quantum realm or was it Kang? Just have an explanation. Don't have us doing some legwork. Some people have not even read the comics. Don't even know this thing is from the comics. What you missed out in, in Ant-Man 1 and 2 and other movies where you you mentioned the quantum realm, here is your opportunity and chance to just elaborate a bit more. Foundation and some groundwork and legwork. The main thing I, I just didn't like, aside from other things, is Kang. Kang's character. They, they did him dirty in this one. They did him dirty in um as an introduction in the Loki series. I dislike that show as well. It's a wasted opportunity. But they did him dirty in this movie. Jonathan Majors is an awesome actor. He was great, practically perfect in Lovecraft Country. I guess he tried to make it more, sometimes a little emotional, sometimes. And then more of, you know, I don't really care. I'm Kang, Kang the Conqueror. I'll, I'll do whatever because I can. We're not told if a Kang can kill a Kang directly. Directly. You exile the guy. And then maybe this is just my dyslexia. Um, I keep hearing he crash landed. So did they shrink him like they did with Ant-Man and then toss him in there? I'm not, when I'm saying Ant-Man, I mean the technology. Or was he teleported there by them and by them only? So with that being said, you couldn't have crash landed. For you to crash means you were flying. Or did they just shoot him out of a cannon from whatever dimension they're, they're in? They're all the other Kangs just shot him from a cannon and he's flying. And because they 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 took out his his power cell or whatever, they they estimated he's going to crash land in, into the que uh, question? question realm. Into the question realm. Yes. Into the quantum realm eventually at precisely 6 p.m. on Wednesday. That's maybe, maybe like I said, maybe it's my dyslexia. Is he crashing or is he thrown in there or is he teleported in there? And if you're thrown, you didn't crash. Then you put the guy in his spaceship with his tech embedded inside his spaceship and the one orb that he needs to power his spaceship to get away. Is this guy stupid? Let us get a sense of his wisdom and knowledge. Let us get a sense of his intelligence. So you're, you're exiled here, stripped of your powers, even though they're inside your orb spaceship chair thing. So can a Kang kill a Kang? We don't know. Um, although at the end credit scene, one of them wasn't happy because he said he was killed and he wished he was the one who did the killing. So you can kill a Kang based on that dialogue, based on that dialogue. Was that a, was that a temporary timeout? Did he give him like a timeout? We know he's going to come back eventually. We're all Kang, so we know wherever we're trapped, we're going to break out. Then my next question is, then why didn't you kill him? Finish him! I'd have liked to see how resourceful Hope was. I'd have liked to see how she dealt with those creatures because she shot one of them, and then when they, the other one replicated, it pounced on her. And I was thinking to myself, so is that the first time you've encountered that creature? Where were you and where were those creatures that they never found where you were hiding? They only appeared out of wherever they appeared out when you showed up. Because that didn't look like she was very capable when she just fell on the floor. And it took Kang in his weakened state to fire the thing. Come on, dude. How long has she been here compared to Kang? I don't know if she fashioned that blaster herself. If she took it from someone else. We don't know. Fine. Just show me some level of, I've been here long enough to know how to take care of myself. You could have fleshed out how Hope survived in this. Is it Hope or Janet? How Janet survived in the quantum realm prior to uh, coming in contact with Kang. I've seen other uh, channels break down that she had some form of superpowers before and now she doesn't have it in this movie. This is what I'm talking about Marvel. They just do anything and come to the cinema, give us your money and piss off. You didn't take out the orb from the ship and you banish this, this Kang dude. You leave it inside his ship 
And then after that, you had the balls Damn, son. to assume that there's no power source in the quantum realm that could power that orb. If you banish this guy in a dimension or reality where there's no power whatsoever that can ever turn that thing back on, makes sense. That's a proper banishment. It's almost like you're playing with him. I know there's no energy source, not even that because he works with 10 people, 15 people, 5,000 people, there's no energy source on that planet that can power that spaceship. I like that. Whoa, I like that. I like that. That's a true banishment. Plus banishing him with the spaceship. It makes sense because you're teasing him. You're toying with him. Then after Janet fixes the ship with him or fixes the orb and then it's powered, the spaceship is a tele... What? what? It's a mind melding thing. What kind of... If I'm Kang and everything I've done is somehow stored on my spaceship or it's my spaceship is interlinked with my uh, mind. I don't know how I would build a spaceship where any non-Kang can touch my spaceship and then figure out what I've done and what I'm planning to do. That already, I don't, I don't know how people let that one slide. You have a technology that works on your mind without having you, without you having to touch the spaceship, dope. But anyone else can touch it and see what you've done or is it because you were sat in the chair so then you could then read your mind through the spaceship? That's, that's bad. You're supposed to be an intelligent person. For a Kang, that is bad. That's future technology? You're 20? That is bad. That means any uh, roach or spider or frog or lizard can just land on the thing and, and get visions. And they wrote this and said, yeah, come to the cinema, give us money, buy popcorn, now piss off. Like the movie, if you don't like it, you suck. If you complain about it, then you suck. If you moan about it, then you're one of those people on the internet who's moaning, then you, you're, you're, you're a hater. You don't know how to write a movie. You're not even an official critic. You people, you people are special creatures. You guys are special, special creatures. You can't look at the thing and realize where it's messed up, where it's just about okay. You're special beings. I love you guys, man. You guys are, I'm not saying people who like this movie are stupid. If you like it, you like it. There's some people who don't like the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter series. There's some people who have read both the books of those stories and don't like the movie. There's some people who don't mind the movie, but prefer the books. There's so many, there's a plethora of people. I'm one of the people who have never read the books of either Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings, but absolutely love those movies. I haven't even read The Hobbit and I love The Hobbit movies. Lord of the Rings, the whole trilogy, I can watch that every year, three times in one year each. No joke, that is a beautiful movie. It also has its own flops and issues. Same thing with Terminator 1, 2, and any other awesome movie on the planet, they all have their little issues here and there. But these are so glaring in the Ant-Man. I'm like, you are, you are not getting away with it. You are not getting away with it. No. Before I even saw this thing, I went online to some of my favorite YouTubers. Yeah, cool movie. Jonathan Majors, Majors brings it as Kang. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Josh Brolin did with Thanos. And his, his portrayal of Thanos, God. Damn. Even though there's a flaw in his whole reasoning, I see why you did it. You could have easily multiplied all the food on the planets and across the cosmos you were saying there's little of. You could have easily expanded each planet. You could have done a lot of things with that, that one gauntlet. And don't try to say, oh, maybe it's mm -mm -mm -mm. No, maybe. We're talking about the concept of the gauntlet. And every stone, each individual stone, is just an infinite power. Infinity stones. You could have easily doubled every ration of food on the planet. Maybe even created a tree or trees that can never be off, off uprooted, that can never um, um, go out of fruit. So I get it. I get where he's coming from and why he did it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. Then you threw him again in Endgame. Not only did you then end him in Endgame, spoilers by the way, spoilers. I should have said spoilers for these two movies I'm mentioning. You then end him in Endgame. You brought him back again, but his younger version and still kept the same, you know, subtle characteristics of that hubris. Even though he's, he witnessed his own death, it didn't deter him from his own path that he wanted to still wield those stones. Beautiful. Beautiful. I didn't want him to be introduced in this movie. I'd have preferred he was introduced in another movie, or maybe like they did with Thanos, where they just sprinkled him in the background. They did, like I said, I didn't like Loki and how they introduced him in Loki. Did we need to see him in Ant-Man? They could have used the Loki series to flesh him out a little bit more, the same way they sprinkled Thanos across the universe in all the other movies. Then would have been like, okay, this Kang guy seems to be showing up over and over again. First of all, when they killed him in the first one, he already told us in Loki, he already told us that there's more to come. So this is the different uh, versions of the more coming. Get us excited for him bit by bit, but you know, put a stamp in our subconscious that this guy is not here to play. He will kill. You send a prick onto a planet with his powers inside the spaceship. So that means without that stuff, he's, he's still Kang human, but he's not Kang powerful. So that means when he levitates things with his hand, he's not doing it because he's got powers. It's his future technology. And without that, he's not resourceful. That would have even tested his might and his power and his resourcefulness being stuck in a dimension or in a realm where there is no power source whatsoever to escape 
then now they've showed us, yo, this dude, yo. And now we see why, why they call him the Kang, the Conqueror, because this boy would fashion anything. Instead, they just find a way to reanimate the particular power source that they sent, they exiled him. Ah. Unless it's like some one of those, um, we, we pulled the wool over your eyes thing or veil over your eyes. It was a trick all along. He wasn't exiled in there. They sent him to the quantum realm to conquer the quantum realm indirectly. So they're all working with each other. We fooled you, haha, audience. It's a stupid, dumb movie, man. Certain things don't add up. They don't make sense. You're not doing things to make us understand why things are done. You don't tell us they can't kill a Kang. And because you don't tell us that, and since the guy at the end, at the end credit scene said, I wish I was going to kill him, then we know, okay, you can kill a Kang for him to say that. And then not only does he get thought, they, they the ants how do you have future technology but it can't withstand the ants and then he put a force field he didn't use his telekinesis or t telekinetic power only when um uh what's his name modok was talking and what a horrendous design they used for that guy putting the mask on which has just been fine have the voice and put the mask on now maybe if you want you want you want us to know it's the guy from the first movie the yellow jacket character uh darren whatever his name is have him do like some virtual projection it's me or some or don't even don't even make make oh my god don't even make it him just make make it that kang created this this creature or this device or this weapon to just be this i think including modok and rearranging or swapping the origin story for modok to darren crosses that's wrong I, for me personally i don't like modok i don't care about modok but if you're going to introduce that character into the mcu do it with some finesse and some sense i felt like i was watching deadpool for a second when they pulled him out of whatever they pulled him out of and it was this big body with small bomb small baby bomb bomb i was like why would you put it you're putting bomb bomb in this oh this is not deadpool it works in deadpool it work it fits in that world as stupid as it is to my eyes some people probably loved it and laughed it i mean laughed at it they probably took pictures it's on this it's on the uh, desktop as a screensaver then when he came to kill cassie twice twice he missed a lot of times when she was full size he there's this one scene where she was running on a bridge and he blew up the bridge ahead of her i was like so you've been missing all your shots before but you managed to shoot ahead of her then she almost fell off and she was climbing and he hovered down and said there's nowhere to go nowhere to run nowhere to hide you're a killing machine kill her what's the monologue about oh it's it's a typical movie trope everyone monologues People write dialogue that's so stupid that you don't know how it comes across with some people who are listening to it. Or don't pay no attention to the dialogue. It's just, you know, comic talk. People always give excuses because it, it's like, oh, because it's taken from a comic book. But then they'll complain that they didn't really adapt the full story in the character. They will give leeway to one thing, but um, agree with some other stup stupid shit. It was just, it's just humor, slight humor. You're taking it too seriously. If this movie were released for free, that won't be taken too seriously. Pay money to see this and you tell me I'm taking it too seriously. This, I'm watching stupidness on screen. How can I pay to watch stupidness on screen? So then you're touching spaceship. Oh, I can see what you've done in the past. Who is Kang? You're the conqueror? Oh my God. What kind of security system is that? I don't know why your security system allows anyone to touch your ship and then see what you've done. It's the dumbest thing entirely. It's it's almost like someone seeing your internet browser of porn. Just by touching the keyboard and then here are the scenes you've watched recently. What? No, 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 no. You can't explain it away. You can't explain it away. You can't. It's stupid. It's wrong and it's dumb. You can't explain it away, man. You can try, but you fail miserably. You cannot. We cannot. As my brother even reminded me, there was one line that they dropped in the movie where he's got technology you can never imagine, you've never seen before or, so, or something like that. But he could not stop ants. He could only levitate that big head um, Modoc prick when he spoke in his presence. Do not talk in my presence. Don't speak when i'm talking in my presence what kind of stupid villain thanos never did that man yes i'm going to compare this dickhead to thanos then when he got, got ant-man to agree to his, his bargain the, he opened the porthole then he walked through then modok spoke again but he didn't move him around with his telekinesis make up your mind can he talk around you or not because you lot looking stupid right now am i the only one that is trying to figure out if hank pym's tech is so unique that even kang cannot replicate it and shrink that thing and if so how did he power his future tech in the quantum realm what exactly exists in the quantum realm that can allow his future engine to be revived what were they making what components did they put together they said 30 years that's enough time to study the chemical composition of that quantum realm it takes time to realize this chemical table looks very different from earth this chemical table looks very different from your your version of the future where you're from okay cool let's figure out what this thing needs but it requires a particular energy source so no matter where kang is stranded on or stuck on or crash landed on or exiled on all he needs to do is find the exact chemical composition of components to put together to power this one thing if that's the case why did you banish him there ah. crash land him there ah. exile him there with that particular orb because you're telling me indirectly that no matter where you are in any realm or dimension 
the particular chemical components to put together that will make this one thing work. Whereas if you had said it's a very futuristic thing that exists in the future that can never be replicated outside of that sphere future they come from, then banishing Kang here makes sense. Then they've had to fashion a new way to traverse that quantum realm or to try and escape. This movie is, hmm, hmm. people came out and said it's it's kicked off phase five in such a great start. Great? The great? What's wrong with you, man? You people just spew out words. Great? The only thing I like about anything is the concept of the whole parallel earth, multiverse, and the quantum realm. Cassie and his daughter were fighting. It's still jokes. It's all jokes here and there. And this one, they're doing a rebellion and they shot this one. Oh, I've got more holes. <laughs> And then you want me to then feel for their rebellion. How can I take your rebellion seriously? How can I take the suffering you're going through seriously? And Kang is not such a bad guy because he's trying to stop him, his other versions of him from destroying the universe, uh, trying to prevent in incursions. When uh, Janet had fixed the thing with him and he sat in that ball, it was just that orb, right? That he travels in. So when he sat in it, and he, he was getting uh, trying to get uh, Janet on board. How long would that have taken for him to escape? I'm saying this because right towards the end, when they had shrunk it down and he put it on the ship and then Ant-Man had grown big and was like, Kang, you lied to me. Where's my daughter? Kang. He then tells his minions to start the launch. When I heard that, I said, ah, uh, this movie, you can't even save yourself. Because I thought it was going to leave there. I thought we were going to end, end this movie with Kang winning. Maybe not even killing one of, the, one of the characters at all, but with Kang winning. So you are saying start the launch prior to that. When it was just you before you had built all your civilization and whatnot on, on your empire, would you have told your orb, start the launch? You're not making any kind of sense. Do you want to live here? Yes or no? Yes, you've been here long enough, but you've now made your own empire. People are now afraid of you. Are you settling? Are you okay with it? You must have still had this hope and desire to want to leave. You now have your one chance where you've got the four people of this Ant-Man's family. You can negotiate, say, not even negotiate, threaten him. If you don't get my son, then I kill you. You can't go there because you are limited in power. You don't know how to shrink the thing either. So that means Pym's technology is so unique that even future can replicate it. But yet Thanos and Ebony Maw replicated that future tech stuff for them to be able to shrink into, into the quantum realm to come out on the other side in Endgame. So I'm confused. Thanos could do it with Ebony Maw's technology. So is Thanos' technology superior to Kang's technology? On Maybe I'm being too geeky right now. You're focusing too much on the little things, man. Just enjoy the movie and shut up. Be a zombie. That's a good boy. What do you, what do you people, you're not, you're not questioning things. You're just watching it yet. It's, it's a good, it's, it's a great start to phase seven, man. It's great. Great start to phase, God damn it. Yes. What are you doing? What are you people doing? When you, when you, do you assess? Shut up and take it. Take it. Keep taking it. That's a good boy. Not looking forward to no Loki stupid TV series and any other stupid dumb series they release on this thing. These people just want to eat money and don't care about the this, this level of intelligence they, they implemented into their storytelling, the writing, stakes. No one on the main cast died. Well, some of the guys in the rebellion died. I don't care. I wanted one. Just give me one death to let me know this and it had to be Kang that killed this one person. Kang was so, so distraught by ants. Ants thwarted your plan. Ants destroyed your suit. Ants. My bad. My bad. Future advanced civilized ants. They could even make it extra spicy where because they went through the quantum realm is so unpredictable. Kang happened to find where they were, nabbed one of them and said, oh, I'm going to help you find your daughter. In the meantime, I need you to help me do something. Then you can even show Kang's ingenuity. He's, so, he's playing Scott and Scott's like, I don't know, man. I just met you. It's my guy. I've been here for a while. I know how it feels to be stuck here. I was on the verge of escaping and something happened and he knows Janet is connected to him, but he'll play it. I said, something happened and my thing was started by someone and um, I'm aware that only your technology can help me. So dude, if you can help me out, it's the thing where you can shrink this thing. That's all he needs. So you can't replicate the, the pin particles, one, and two, you're not strong enough to withstand your whole multiple variants of yourself because you had to send Ant-Man to do that. I wonder how many people he even sent there to do that in the first place, but it would have been redundant because they wouldn't have the shrinking particles, right? They wouldn't. So whatever Hank Pym made in those little things that make things grow and shrink, whatever, it's only unique to Hank and no other people can replicate it except Thanos and Ebony Maw, except Thanos and Ebony Maw. But you know, you're too geeky, man. Stop taking it so seriously. Then I'd have had Kang negotiate with him, say, yo, I've got a squad looking for your daughter right now. And how many people came with you? Four of you? Damn. Was that you guys with the beacon? In fact, we're so scattered that if we don't find your family in time, you might end up seeing your daughter and she's 40 years old. 
And then, you know, Scott is still worried about the whole losing time thing because of the, the, the snap, snapping fingers of Thanos. Because he's so, you know, worried about that and panicky, he wants to find him. And imagine that happened to your daughter and then hope. And if you, you came here with who? How old are they? You panic him small. See, if they're if they're seventy here or they're sixty here, and they land up wherever they land, you, by the time you meet them, they could be night. They could they could cease to exist. They could easily disintegrate because quantum realm works so funny. Then maybe Scott's like, "How come you've been here for so long and you survived?" My suit, my suit, you know, keeps me from aging in this whatever thing. But we need to get that device to use it to find um uh your precise pinpoint the precise location location of your family, and then it'll be able to uh, keep them in the in a bubble where they don't age. And I can do that for you, even though you haven't aged now but if you stay here long enough you might age i can give you the suit or something then you, you have a little element where he puts on his suit but since it's kang putting on his suit he's sabotaging the suit indirectly but when you find all of them lock him up launch your ship piss the off out of there you piss off instantly because you want to leave you've been there for too long you're tired of it only for you to find the orb it shrinks down you put it in your ship start the launch what do you what Start the launch. What are you doing? Start, you know, count, countdown. What do you mean in five, four? That's, that's too short of a countdown. Start the launch and maybe 30 seconds. Countdown. Start the launch. You don't want to go home. You don't want to go home. Someone who wanted to go home badly would have instantly gone. He said, start the launch. Don't take it too serious. Don't take it too serious. Calm down. Calm down. It's only a comic book movie. It's only a movie. It's not real. It's not real life. You... You special people, man. I love you guys so much. Telling me it's a great start to phase five. Great start, man. <laughs> Foolishness, man. Sad and you had to watch a stupid movie talking about, yeah, it's a great start. It's not a bad movie. It's shit. It's shit. Imagine then Ant-Man realizing that he was tricked. Then he wants to fight Kang. He's like, ah, you can't really beat me now. I already fucked up your suit. Like, wait, you messed up my suit? How? Then he triggers the thing he put in his suit. You're done. You ain't shrinking or growing in no way. You're finished. Then he's like, okay, cool. You want to use technology to beat me? Man to man, no tech. Then Kang's like, man to man, no tech. Dude, I'm Kang. Then he thumps Ant-Man to a pulp. Hey! Then you have maybe Janet Van Dyne or um, Hank try to save him. Maybe Hope is taking Cassie away or something. And then Cassie's like, no, I want to fight with my dad. She tries to help him. But then you show Kang killing Ant-Man in front of Cassie. God. He's like, I'm a man of my word, boy. I don't play. I'm outie. Then he naps off. He's gone. Doesn't need to say, start the launch. <laughs> he said, start the launch. He doesn't need to say that. Keep him away from the rings or oh, because his, his spaceship or his empire is so big now. Do you, I asked again, do you want to leave this dimension or no? It doesn't matter how much you've grown in your empire because you did it. You are capable of doing it again. Since you were able to restart your energy source with this regular random chick, you're capable of doing it again. You have the power to be able to do so. It's in your spaceship. I don't even know how they repurpose the power cell to make the porthole. Because I was then thinking, so you don't really need your spaceship to leave then, do you? You could just make a portal and then walk through. And you couldn't do that all this time until the orb was shrunk. Then when you saw Ant-Man about to break your thing and people were fighting with the rebellion stuff, why couldn't you just make the porthole and then walk through? So how did Janet do that with his own tech? Did, she te did he teach her his tech? Did he teach her te new technology stuff? Did he give her tech from his, from, did, he, yeah, did he give her tech from his world that she's kept? Nothing, no discussion, no explanation, nothing. How were you able to do that in such a short space of time while all the noise is going on? Instead, when it was your turn to leave, start the launch, matron, start it now. I repeat, start the launch, stop it. Marvel, stop, get out of town, man, cut it out. You people are good at lying to people and fooling with people and then have us sitting out making videos. Like I said, watching my favorite YouTubers talking about, yes, you know, cool movie, go and, go and watch what, you lying cows. Then when it comes to spoiler review, oof, no, I've had a week or two to really sit down and think about it. I was watching that I didn't need to think about it. Even though my brother had told me some things, I was like, yeah, go ahead. You can, you can tell me spoilers. But I was watching the rest that he kept, kept away from me. He wanted me to experience it on my own. I didn't need two weeks to marinate and go, oh, I just realized he could have escaped himself. He didn't need to tell the guy, start my lo start the launch. If I want to leave somewhere and I know I can rebuild what I rebuilt in this room, I'm gone. I'm gone. Quick time. Quick time. I don't need to waste time. Start the launch because I came here in a ball, but now I built this empire. I can't leave this empire. So maybe you're trying to tell me Kang is also greedy. That's why it took a, it took a while for the spaceship to. He landed here in that ball. He was ready to leave in that ball. Is your future tech so futuristic it needs time to launch? Come on, come on, guys, stop it. 
stop it. He opened a porthole from where he was standing to the point where he could easily tell Scott to go and pick up his orb thing. He opened a portal for him, Scott, and then big head douchebag to walk through. If I was him, I don't want to get beaten by this uh, ant mob, ant Scott and his rebellion people. I open the portal and I'm gone with my spaceship and then start the launch there. Sit down and go, okay, cool. Start the launch. What can I watch on my screen right now while the launch is starting? Or maybe the portal is, he can open is too small. Maybe, 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 maybe. No exact um, um, breakdown of his powers and weakness. Everything is maybe. It could be. Might be. Maybe probably. But it's not like this in the comics though. Have you read the comics? Have you read the comics? You should read the comics. Check out the comics. Piss off. Get out. Just stop it. What was given to us on screen is not cohesive nor is it cohesive with other previous things that was, that was given to us. It's not enough of you out there saying this movie is crap and telling the truth about what Marvel is doing, eating your money, and then starting the launch to leave you hanging. I am your one and only host, The Cosmic Jedi, signing out. Start the launch. Begin the launch. Thank you very much. Thank you.